Welcome back to Harrelson and Trumpets. Today we are looking at a Bach uh, HEVS HEVS and this piston is off of one of our clients Bach Trumpets. This one has the original stem on it and you can see uh, someone's done a valve alignment so there's some special uh, type of a rubber felt there or a shim. Uh, this is the second valve. It's got a different shim on it and it's got the, the halves on it and the third one uh, same thing and it's got the halves on it. Now you can see if you look close that this client had to use pliers to get this valve stem on. That's really normally not necessary um, and I'll show you how to put them on without pliers. However, this really is an informative video to let you know that if you keep the aluminum stems, you're going to have the problem that this customer experienced. And his pistons look great. Even the stems look great. What you don't see is the damage to the barrel caused by the aluminum stem uh, due to galvanic corrosion. So that's what I want to show you today. And that's why it's so important to be using brass stems with a brass barrel. When you mix aluminum with brass, then you create a uh, uh, a scenario where you have an anode and a cathode and basically uh, the brass is going to start stealing some of the atoms from the, the aluminum and embedding them into the threads. And I want to show you something. The reason I have these pistons is because the customer couldn't get all three of the halves to screw on all the way. So now you can see this one gets tight and now it's almost stuck. It won't go in any further. The reason that's true is because the aluminum that was on the original threads of this stem are missing. So some of the aluminum is now degraded and it's inside the threads inside the barrel. See inside there, see how it looks all silvery? See if I can make that focus. All right, see how it's all silvery inside. That is aluminum that uh, basically got moved to the brass and it's adhered very, very tightly. So it's not going to come out of those threads without some force. So the best thing you can do is switch out from your aluminum stems to brass as soon as possible. Now the aluminum goes in just fine. The reason it does is because the material that's missing on the threads is exactly the material that's embedded in here. So it fits. But if you leave them on too long, they will eventually get stuck and not want to come off. I'll do a separate video to show you how to get them off, but that's a lot more work and you can avoid all that by just changing your stems to brass as soon as possible. Okay, so now uh, I have a threading tool. So this is the tool we use on the lathe to thread the actual parts when we make them. So what I'm gonna do is take that threading pool tool and run it through the entire threads. And when I do that, I'm basically removing that aluminum. And I'm just gonna go around a couple times. I have to do quite a bit to get this all the way in, but what I'm doing is carving out the aluminum that's stuck in the brass. And the nice thing about this is that the aluminum is softer than the brass. So it's, uh, it's gonna come out easier than the brass. Now check that out. This is how much material I removed from inside that barrel. Come on, focus. There we go. So that much material and that's what it looks like. All of that came off from the outside or the inside. So now I'm going to blow it out and try that half again. All right, so let's put that halves back in. Well, that, actually that wasn't so bad. So that one went all the way down now. Now he sent these all the way across the country for me to fit them and you don't want to have to do that. So if you change your sooner than later, you're not going to have this problem. What happens if you were to change to a brand new aluminum stem? Well, the exact same problem. It doesn't matter if you change to a new aluminum or brass stem. The new aluminum stem would have gotten stuck the exact same way because the material was still stuck inside there. So let me uh, just open it up a little more to make this really smooth. And then I'm going to box these back up and send them back to our customer. If you bought a set of halves, and you're having this issue, you have a couple options to make this uh, relatively painless. The first is you could use a threading tool, but you're not gonna have one. And these cost, you know, 60 to $80. So you're probably not gonna have this solution. Another option is to use 
a dental tool, and I'm going to pull one off of my machine here. So you can use a dental tool that has the si same type of profile. So you can see right there, their profile is similar, and you can put that in and clean out the aluminum. It's not as easy, but it can be done. Um, there are some other ways to remove it. Um, one is to take uh, a scribe, and you'd have to work from the side and scribe that space. Um, another way is to dissolve the aluminum. And if you know how to do that, then I don't have to explain anything. But there are some chemicals, and I don't recommend doing this unless you're trained, uh, that will remove the aluminum before etching the brass. So that is a possibility. Um, an ultrasonic cleaner can also break some of it loose and make it easier. And you could also use a wire brush. I recommend uh, brass, but you could also use a steel wire brush that fits inside there, like uh, one of the radial ones, and then scrape it all out. But at the end of the day, it's going to be work to put these on if you've had aluminum stems for a long time. Um, another way you can prevent that galvanic corrosion, even though it, it may not last forever, to slow it down, you could put some dielectric grease on there. So there are a lot of different greases that you can use that will slow down or stop the, uh, the reaction that happens, which is actually an electrical reaction. So let me blow this out one more time, and then we'll put it back together and make sure that the halves fit in there perfect. All right, so it's just slightly tight, but you know, they were designed to be a little bit tight. It feels pretty good. Um, so the next step is put the spring back in place and we would grease these threads, which I'll do off camera. And then uh, I'm gonna ship them back to the customer. So hopefully that helps any of you that are having problems with this, uh, this issue. The last thing I need to do is remove the original uh, valve alignment bumper and put it back on piston number one. Cause I did that with two and three, so I didn't get them mixed up. So there you have it. That is a set of Bach pistons where the halves did not fit because of galvanic corrosion. These are the stems. They actually look pretty good. And a lot of you pull your stems off and they say, oh, I don't need those. Um, I don't have any problems. Well, all three of these were corroding into the threads and we had to clean off the threads of all three. And it took me a while. So, oh, I see I left a little bit of the shim. There's a tiny shim left on that piston. So I didn't see it. So let me put that back on number one. Uh, but that's it. So if you have any questions, feel free to email us at harrelsontrumpets at gmail.com. Or you can call us. Our number is 303-657-2747. And uh, we'll be able to help you fit your halves. If you don't have halves and you don't know much about them, um, then you can go to our website and read all about them. But this customer replaced their springs with the springs we recommend for the halves. And it makes the, the valve action very quiet and it also increases efficiency, so it makes things, uh, attacks uh, more stable, especially on horns that have been used more than a few years. And uh, it's gonna prevent that galvanic corrosion for life. So thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Made in Denver, Colorado by people who care about quality, performance, reliability, and amazing craftsmanship. High efficiency valve stems with anyone who has ears and doesn't use pliers on their trumpets.